endogenous forms that we want to, to kind of leverage. So it is a trivial thing exceptionally trivial thing for me to place electrodes across your skin, pass current over them and to cause your muscle to contract trivial. Um, and I can make it look like your muscles are working again. Hey everyone. My name is Dr. Nick Housley with Modus Nova. I'm a licensed neurophysical therapist and neuroscientist helping brain injury survivors understand how to make functional gains after their injury. I hope this video helps you in your recovery. I want, diving into the actual product, yeah. um, the, it, what I was familiar with till now was using electrical stimulation. Mm. And when the, when the EEG, the EMG signals are picked up through whatever sensors there are in the device, and then as sort of the feedback or, you know, as a reward to the patient, they're given these electrical stim that actually helps them like with it's similar to what Bioness operates on, where you give it. So I, I've understood, or maybe falsely understood, but looking at your device, um, it seems like there's no electrical stim involved. Yep. So what is moving the yeah. patients? Yeah. If it's not the, and well, why good. did you guys go away from the e-stem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So originally we had um, EMG um on the modus hand the reason it was called the hand mentor it was originally were pads that would actually go along the extensor muscles mm -hmm. and provide a some insight into the activity of the muscle i mean fundamentally right the muscle is just a big amplifier of the nervous system right so we could kind of think about it that way um right because you have fundamental action potentials that are occurring in your spinal cord that then transmit down to your muscle and then tiny little signals get amplified across a big um, calcium capacitor, which is our muscle, <laughs> big discharge we can easily record. Um, now that, that works pretty well. Um, there's a bunch of technical issues with EMG. Um, the biggest one is non-stationarity across time, right? Because you, know, you can put an electrode on one day and it's completely different the next. And so it becomes very hard to use it as a reliable tool um, without a skilled provider there to validate and normalize things. And so if we're thinking about solutions that can be scalable um, and distributed without necessarily having real-time oversight, we need to make it as simple as possible. And that was one of the ways we simplified it. Now, um, how does it work right now? And I, I wanna kind of differentiate things. I think that there is this idea um, that they're helpful to understand and that is there are exogenous forms of assistance and there are endogenous forms that we want to, to kind of leverage. So it is a trivial thing, exceptionally trivial thing for me to place electrodes across your skin, pass current over them and to cause your muscle to contract, trivial. Um, and I can make it look like your muscles are working again. That's now, a regular TENS unit. Yeah, or, or an NMES device or an FES device, like a BioNES, right? It's trivial. Now, the thing is, is as soon as I take that off, the carryover effects all but wash away. There's very little to no carryover in those systems. And which is in my book, I call that, and that's not that I'm devaluing that, that just is doing a different thing than a therapeutic modality. Those tools in my book are what I call them assistive devices, just like a wheelchair is or crutches, right? They help you get from point A to point B, but it won't help you walk again, right? Um, it won't help your endogenous systems. So yeah, I can easily put a um, bioness device on your tibialis interior. I can condition it on weight bearing activity such that whenever your foot is off the ground, it fires electricity and causes a contraction of your tibialis interior preventing foot drop, easy. Hey. If you're finding this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe to help other brain injury survivors learn how Modus Nova is changing neuro rehab. But the thing is, is as soon as I take that off, foot drop comes back. And this is actually what their trials show. This is what their studies show. So as an assistive device, it works very well. The problem is, is if someone is conditioned on a goal, that is, I want to improve my own internal systems. I want to be able to strengthen my own endogenous capabilities. That system will not work. So you have to rely on a different type of stimulus. And what we're trying to do with our systems, the modus hand and modus foot, is we rely on the detection of very, very small kinematic and kinetic variables to infer intent. And with intent, 
And knowing the virtual environment that someone's playing in a, in a screen, we can actually figure out when someone needs assistance to move in a certain direction. This is why it's exceptionally important for someone to be engaged in the activity because that way we know when we need to provide help and not to provide help. And so what we can do is we can watch tiny fractions of degree of movement, so kin um, kinematic motions. We can also watch the kinetics, meaning forces applied. So we can look at those two parameters and understand when someone is intending to, for instance, to move up. And if they're trying to move up and they're having difficulty because they're not moving quick enough to achieve the goal, then we can provide a little bit of assistance. And we can do this on a basically every couple of dozen milliseconds and say, okay, does Nick need help to move up here? Yes, we'll provide a little bit of help. Wait and see, is he still having trouble? Okay, we'll continue to provide a little bit of help. And if you do this on a very, very short time scale, you can provide help when you need to and not provide help when you don't. So it allows someone to engage and um, challenge their own endogenous systems, but while still getting help. And so that's really fundamentally how it works is we're, we're, we're shifting that intent recognition system to endogenous um, pathway, which then gives them the capacity to retrain and get better in such that the fact that when they take the system off, they have those effects carry over. Right, but in, ultimate, in layman's, yeah. in layman's yeah. terms, what is yeah. actually moving the hand? When, oh, oh when... yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a robotic device. It's an exoskeleton that goes on their hand. Right. And there is a muscle. There is a pneumatic actuator that can contract and relax, just like our muscles. It's sensing. Yeah. How is it yes. sensing? This? Yeah, so there is, as I said, there's kinematic and kinetic sensors. So there is a kinematic sensor that detects the range of motion. And there's kinetic sensors that detects forces. And so with, with movement and force, we can figure out where someone's intent is actually directed at. So that's kind of unique. I don't think there's another, I, I'm not aware of another device that's doing that. No, no, there really aren't. Um, and that's, that's kind of why we have this unique space. Um, so being able to do, have those two actions, um, like I said, technically it's three things, right? It's kind of three pillars because we've got the ability to sense those two things the ability to then change, take all that information and make a virtual environment that someone can engage in. Um, and then we can also help them dynamically. And dynamically, what I mean by that is, you know, you probably know this, the recovery process is nonlinear, right? Even within a day, people can have a lot of spasticity or tone that can then go down once they warm up and then they can get fatigue, right? So it can go, it can wax and wane even within a given day. And we need to be able to change and titrate how much help someone gets. So we can actually dynamically on a second by second basis, provide different levels of help. And then of course can change not only on a second by second basis, but it can change across longer time scale as someone improves. So, and that's kind of the three pillars of how this, these technologies work. Thanks for watching this video. If you have questions or would like to speak with me about how you can make functional gains from home, call or text me at 404-939-3476 or visit modusnova.com slash contact.